OpenRAN is still in the initial stages of development in many ways, but we're already seeing real world deployments and commercial trials, as well as many tests and POCs. Uh, two of the companies in the thick of leading edge open RAN developments, including those at Dish Network and Telecom Italia, are Dell and VMware. So to find out more, I'm talking today with Maurizio Gradi, Solution Manager for the Telco sector in Italy at Dell Technologies, and Francesco Sorrentino, Senior Business Development Manager, EMEA, for Telco and Edge Cloud Solutions at VMware. So thanks for joining us today. Uh, Maurizio, uh, can you tell us about the recent project that the two companies worked on in Italy? What are the elements involved in the solution and how were they structured? So uh, we started doing uh, this uh, commercial trial with Telecom Italia and we have implemented uh, a 4G open RAN solution and a 5G open RAN solution, uh, both fully disaggregated and fully virtualized. Uh, the 5G RAN is, uh, is implemented in a multi-operator connector flavor. So actually we are connecting that to an NSA core and an, and, uh, and an SA core, uh, core network. Um, so in partnership with VMware and Mavenir, we have put together an hardware and software infrastructure to prove it in a real environment in the city of Matera. Matera is a small city in the south of Italy. Uh, from their point of view, it was critical to install uh, purpose-built edge servers with the ability to operate in a central office room where temperatures are tough and uh, there are, you know, environmental challenges. Uh, definitely, we are not in a data center. We are in the transmission room of a, of a central office. Uh, another key factor was also the deployment of network components, which are able to synchronize uh, with the transport network and distribute the clock to the U and to the remote RU in this uh, in this project. On this infrastructure, we have installed the VMware TCP platform, uh, the Telco Cloud platform, and the Mavenir network function to create a fully disaggregated solution with the ability to manage all the components, uh, the CU, the DU, and the RU. And Francesco, uh, what did VMware bring to this as well? Yeah, uh, you know, we are working uh, in the forefront of this uh, Oran uh, technology that is something new, that it's something revolutionary that uh, is, uh, is happening now and uh, will, uh, will follow, of course. And we are working, we are exciting to work with the real uh, CN CSP innovators around the world. So we don't have only the example here in Italy uh, that Maurizio mentioned, but we have also, we are working together with Dell uh, uh, also in uh, US with DISH, that is a real greenfield uh, innovator uh, in the in the Oran part uh, that has already deployed uh, commercial traffic uh, this sum, during this summer uh, in, uh, in Las Vegas, some hundreds of, uh, of radio cells uh, in 5G. Uh, so this is something that we are very proud of. And how can Open RAN benefit network operators? What advantages does it deliver? Uh, Francesco, let's start with you. Yes, let's um, think about the, let's say, the, the, the pillars where the, these benefits are based on. What I think the, the pillars are related to the ORAN are for sure cloudification, openness, disaggregation of the baseband unit and intelligence or starting from these uh, key paradigms uh, each one will have the, the will bring benefits to the csp let's start from cloudification cloudification is uh, the possibility to put on the cloud the run access uh, radio access uh, network and this of course uh, will bring an immediate uh, possibility to scale and uh, volume, let's say, radio cells deployment uh, via software uh, deployment and not anymore via uh, installation and commissioning of traditional run impact. And this, of course, is a big, uh, let's say, change in the, in the uh, operator uh, mindset and cost. Openness. Openness is uh, contained in the in the Oran uh, world. So Oran is based on the openness and is the biggest promise of this, uh, of this alliance and uh, standardization part. So the possibility to have a real multi-vendor ecosystem 
uh, that is uh, very different and much more, uh, let's say, scalable than the current ecosystem on the run. Then the baseband uh, disaggregation. Disaggregation uh, is uh, implicit in Oran concept, so you will have the possibility to disaggregate uh, the baseband unit that today is proprietary hardware and software and tomorrow and today since, since today is possible to give this possibility to many vendors uh, part of this ecosystem and then the intelligence the intelligence is uh, the part of the oran alliance that is uh, let's say dedicated to the management and to automation of the complexity that is embedded in an oran network deployment in which you have uh, an ecosystem, uh, multi-vendor and uh, software defined uh, run that we have to manage different uh, vendors uh, and uh, different software release and uh, different management options, automations and subscriber. So this part is something that will complete uh, in terms of uh, benefit and uh, pillars the Oran offers. Okay, great. And uh, Maurizio, what's your view on how Open RAN can benefit operators? I, I can echo definitely what Francesco has been saying, and I want to put uh, you know an accent on uh, the competition. So definitely, communication service providers are looking to open the floor uh, to competition. They want to see better performance at lower cost, uh, and this was not really possible before, especially with look uh, if we look at the European. Uh, uh, arena there were only basically two vendors in the in the radio space uh, now uh, you know opening to the competition will bring down costs but as well and this is very important uh, will increase the innovation speed so looking at open run open means lower cost but also means a faster innovation Okay, great. Thanks for that. Uh, now, Dell and VMware are working on greenfield and brownfield open RAN deployments. Uh, what are the main differences you're seeing in these different kinds of deployments? Uh, Maurizio, let's start with you. We, we can say that uh, there are uh, differences between the two which are a bit complementary. Uh, a, a greenfield operator uh, it implies that you build a partnership with them. Uh, it relies on a strong level of trust. Uh, the, the mood is definitely uh, to work in partnership to innovate and build something together. Uh, on the other hand, there are a, you know, strong pressure on the time uh, because they normally have obligation to fulfill commitments with, their, uh, with the authorities uh, and they need to do it quickly and do it right at the first time. So, uh, as always, failure is not an option, but here is, is, uh, is even more important because uh, normally Greenfield uh, start to get into the, into the market and they have all the lights on, on them. Uh, if we look at the brownfield, it's more or less the contrary. Uh, they can have more time to experiment with the technology. They can you know, do uh, deep testing in the lab to make sure it, the technology works before they go into production. But on the other end, as a vendor, uh, you need to gain the trust of the, of, of the telco. Uh, and if you look at the Dell and VMware, we are not perceived as a radio vendor or we are not being present into this market so far. So definitely uh, we need to, to gain the trust, to build a relationship, uh, proving that we can do uh, that, uh, showing our expertise and our commitment. Um, Francesco, what differences are you seeing between greenfield and brownfield open RAN deployments? Well, uh, you know the, the main technical topic uh, when you work with uh, with uh, brownfield uh, is that uh, you need uh, to manage the the long experience that they have uh, since uh, let's see the, the the born of mobile networks. Uh, uh, and uh, of course, uh, you have to manage uh, the backward compatibility and all the, let's say, services that they have deployed since 2G. So 2G, 3G, 4G and 5G. They have already subscribers, services on field. And so uh, moving uh, this revolution on 
Oran, of course, uh, you have to consider this uh, as uh, a matter of fact. While when you work with a green field, like for example, DISH in uh, in the US, they are a totally cloud native uh, operator, uh, green field, so they don't have to manage the, the rest of the technologies. And of course, they have a different approach and we as, as a vendor have to have uh, adapt to these uh, to the needs of the, of the different customer but of course it's something that is very exciting for both vmware and dell okay yes uh, very different scenarios there uh, and francesco what are you seeing are the main challenges being experienced as operators begin their real world open ran deployments yeah what uh, what uh, we have experienced as uh, as uh, challenges, of course, uh, during the, the real deployments or the trials that we are doing around the world is, of course, that uh, um, uh, the, the operators, the GSP, uh, expect uh, uh, a certain maturity of the technology, you know, because we are talking, talking about something uh, uh, that is uh, not born now, but in the last years, of course, in the last few years. So the maturity of, uh, of the technology uh, has to be uh, mandatory, uh, an expectation from, from, the, from the, the CSP. So all the maturity of, uh, of the other ecosystem, not only, let's say, the players that we are, we are seeing today, you know, Dell and VMware, but also all the CU and DU and the radio unit vendors that have to reach the, the maturity that is comparable with the traditional run deployments. Uh, and also another challenge that we see is also the, uh, the availability of the ecosystem. So the ecosystem is the key factor in the Oran success. So the, the ecosystem, supplier ecosystem has to improve and getting further and further more. Okay. And this is uh, something that uh, will let Oran, of course, having success, because also this is something that will decrease the cost, uh, more competition, less cost. And also the differentiation. So we have to be very good together with all the ecosystem in order to differentiate Oran from the traditional run deployments. So differentiation will prove the benefits and the, the, uh, the reasons why to change. And the, the differentiation is based on, uh, on my point of view, also on the, on the, on the benefit of, of the use case that uh, the operator can run on Aurora appliance instead of the traditional run. That's uh, my point of view. Okay, and Maurizio, what are you seeing as the main challenges for operators going to real-world deployments? Well, definitely, as uh, Francesco pointed out, uh, the uh, the maturity of the technology is something we have to prove uh, because we are, you know, here we are transforming the run for the first time since uh, since years. Um, it's the first time we introduce computing into the space. It's the first time we introduce uh, different components and we break the silos uh, in that in that space. So making something that is intrinsically more complex, BAs as uh, as well as uh, what the operator expects from current technology, is definitely a challenge. But the good thing is that we have been into this journey, this kind of transformation before because something similar happened into the core network a few years ago when we made the transformation from uh, you know, the legacy uh, siloed uh, network function, uh, physical network function into the virtualized network function uh, over an NFVI infrastructure. So uh, we are pretty confident that uh, the work we are doing today together with this uh, uh, in, in innovative operator like DISH and, and Telecom Italia uh, we'll have to solve the challenge very, very soon. Okay, excellent. Um, now, how is Open RAN helping to optimize networks? Uh, Francesco, let's start with you here. Yeah, um, what uh, what we see uh, as a 
optimization part of the network is uh, what I mentioned as one of the four pillars, so the intelligence. The optimization of the ORAN network uh, will rely on, uh, on this intelligence. Because, as said, the complexity that uh, we see already today and will, of course, explode with the massive deployments uh, cannot be managed by humans. So it will be needed in order to manage, optimize and run these uh, networks, uh, uh, the automation that is given by, uh, let's say, algorithms based on artificial intelligence and machine learning techniques. This part is will be is today and will be mandatory, of course, and as already planned by the Oral Alliance as a, as a standardization. So uh, this part uh, will be relied on the RIC, so the RUN intelligence controller, it will be made of software components. And of course, the operator will benefit uh, also in this part of uh, um, an openness. And here there will be, of course, the competition of the best company that can provide the best use case, the best software models that can help. OK, thanks. And uh, Maurizio, how do you think OpenRAN can help in terms of network optimization? Well, definitely, uh, you know, having uh, finally radio management across the entire network is, is definitely that will, uh, will help a lot uh, the, the operators. Uh, so far, if you look at, uh, you know, radio optimization, that was done uh, traditionally in the domain of a single uh, radio vendor. So, uh, you know, the Ericsson of the Nokia of the world, they have their own solution uh, specific for, the, for their radio. Um, and making a multi-vendor radio management was uh, normally a pain. Now, Open RAM brings open interfaces, and definitely this is key to finally allow the radio management across a multi-vendor environment. And what is the monetization potential for Open RAN? Uh, Maurizio, let's start with you. So uh, looking at monetization uh, and Open RAN as a technology, they don't look like uh, the same thing, right? Uh, technology is, uh, Open RAN is a technology and uh, we that we are implementing. So per se, there is no uh, monetization part in it. But the deployment of Overrun brings the deployment of computing at the edge. Uh, and this can accelerate the use of this infrastructure, not just for the, the, the telco functions, but also for the end user services. So you can deploy an infrastructure, uh, hardware and software, where you can implement the telco edge node, so the network function, but also the service edge node, when you can implement uh, the customer 5G services and realize all the goodness that we expect from 5G, such as, uh, you know, augmented reality, virtual reality, uh, analytics at the edge, uh, assisted driving, and, and so on and so forth. Okay, great. And uh, Francesco, what do you see as the monetization potential for Open RAN? Well, all, um, let's say, also the use case that uh, have been mentioned by, by Maurizio will be facilitated, uh, of course, in a cloud edge environment. And uh, we have to consider also that some of these use cases have to leverage on the, the intelligence and on the latency. So uh, these will be better made on the far edge part of the network. Uh, of course, these have to be made in an effective and reliable way because the, the most use case, uh, let's say future uh, proof use case that the operator are looking for are related, uh, for instance, to network license, but also autonomous drive. That are the use case that uh, will bring in the future the best disruptive monetization for, for, the, for the operators. Okay, fantastic potential there. Well, it has been great to hear about your experiences with real world open RAN deployments. Maurizio, Francesco, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Ray, for having us here today and goodbye. Thank you very much and uh, have a nice day. Ciao.